What's poppin' Pantherologists? Welcome to today's episode of Pantherology. My latest mock draft for the Carolina Panthers. And Fitter takes a tr- trade down, maybe? Who knows? But I think he might. And I'll tell you the reason why. But before we get to today's topic, pound that like button, pound the subscribe button, comment down below at the end of the video. Guys, I'm going to keep doing these mock drafts. I'm going to have them one out at least once a week, maybe twice a week, but... Seems like y'all enjoy them, so I'm going to keep putting them out there for you. Keep bringing that raw content that you deserve. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get into this topic here. So, as we all know, this past Thursday, the Carolina Panthers' wide-ranging search for a new front office chief came to a fitting end. So, Scott Fitterer, a 20-year member of the Seattle Seahawks, Brain Trust, was named the franchise's latest general manager after agreeing to a five-year deal with the Carolina Panthers. Now, Fitterer, who began in Seattle, was an area scout in 2001, has served as an integral part of one of the most sports-successful franchises. His rise began in 2011 when he was promoted to director of college scouting, which would then be followed up by Bumps to co-director of player personnel in 2015, and then most recently, VP of football operations in 2020. The first true test for Fitterer in his latest gig will come this spring, when he heads the war, to the war room for the first time in Carolina. If this time in Seattle is any indication, it will be a busy occasion. In our newest seventh round mock 2021 mock draft, Fitterer makes two trades, I think, and including a move down in the round one. Now, I'm just basing this off of ideas and things I've seen. So round one, we go with the number 12 overall pick with Gregory Rosu, the defensive lineman out of Miami, Florida. So the Panthers will trade the number 8th overall pick to the 49ers for the number 12 and the number 44th pick overall. Now the opening of the Fitter era is a first round trade down. Seemingly the only thing more common in Seattle than a Starbucks. So since Fitterer's promotion to director of college scouting in 2011, The Seahawks have traded down from the first round spot eight times on draft day. So with that, so with that being said, the consensus of the top four quarterbacks have been swiped clean within the prior seven selection of my scenario. We're moving down and accumulating more capital to fill out the roster. Now our partner, the San Francisco 49ers, have no qualms imparting with their second rounder to leap over the likes of Denver, Dallas, New York, in sniping their shutdown cornerback of the future, Caleb Farley. So with the number 12th pick, we pick Gregory Rosu, who possesses some of the most salivating upside in hit this class. The 20-year-old has an entire checklist marked up, having showcased his tools, speed, refined hand technique, and strength, and production to back it up. He had 15 and a half sacks, 19 and a half tackles for a loss in 2019, and all while standing at an opening on at six foot six and 260 pounds. Now. Although Rosu opted not to play in 2020, he gave us enough reason to believe he can carry over and continue to expand upon his dominant pressure at the pro level. Whether it's coming off the edge or even from the interior. I mean, hell, he already has a ring endorsement from his mentor, Clayus Campbell, who serves as as a solid comparison for Rosu, giving their versatility and size. Carolina may be wise to listen to Campbell 
as they should be looking to amp up their pass rushing arsenal, giving their struggles and closing up opposing pockets this past season. I think he'll fit nicely in what's shaping up to be a potent rotation alongside Derek Brown, YGM, and Brian Burns. While Rosu would be the third first round defensive lineman drafted by this franchise in as many years, you simply cannot have enough ammunition when it comes to your pass rush. Fitterer would know, and as in another notable trend the Seahawks have used at least one of their first two picks on defensive linemen in eight of the last drafts. So now we go into round number two. Number 40 overall pick, we're going to go with Tyson Campbell, the cornerback out of Georgia. Now, Seattle sure loved their lengthy defensive backs during Fitter's stint. See, you know, the Legion of Doom, you know. So, so there's one to help Carolina rebuild their secondary. Now, Campbell measures in at a six foot two, 185 pounds, with a lanky frame and obvious athleticism to complement it. Even though he'll have to learn how to limit the types of big plays he sometimes allowed at Georgia. His impact on the Bulldogs' defense and wide set of physical tools is undeniable while we could have perhaps stayed at number eight to take Farley or even sit back for Patrick Sertain the second Panthers Matt Rule may not value cornerbacks that highly evidenced by by their pro propensity for playing zone defense and the franchise decision not to pony up for James Bradbury last spring so Instead, we'll gladly settle for the smooth, agile, potential, dynamic Campbell, whose skills should translate right away into those zone looks. All right, next pick, still in round number two, number 44 overall, we're going to go with Liam Eichenberg, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame, which we acquired with the trade of the 49ers. So, the left tackle position in Carolina has been one of the most uncertain spots in all of football. Since 2014, each of the following men have accumulated at least one start on the blind side. Byron Bell, David uh, Fokult, Michael Orr, Mike Rimmers, Matt Khalil, Chris Clark, Marshall Newhouse, Darrell Williams, Taylor Moten, Greg Little... Dennis Daly, Russell Kong, Trent Scott, and Michael Schofield. How about we sure that spot up with one of the surest players in college football? Eichenberg, another promising offensive line prospect, being churned out of Notre Dame, was as reliable as they can come in this time at South Bend. The 2020 Consensus All-American allowed just three sacks in his three years as a starter. So holding it down at left tackle with a six foot six frame and 305 pounds, while he doesn't necessarily stand out for his athleticism, his ability to generate power and his awareness headline a handful of positive attributes that'll help Eichenberg thrive in the NFL. Next round. So round number three, the number two, number 72 overall pick. Jamie Newman, the quarterback out of Georgia. After seeing the likes of Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, and Trey Lance all gone before we hit on the clock in the first round, we have to take a shot, right? So let's try with Newman, who fits the mold of what many teams are now hoping to roster under center in today's NFL. At six foot four and 230 pounds, he's a tank of a dual threat. Having 
flashed his potence both through the air and on the ground at Wake Forest before transferring to Georgia. Newman's physical gifts make him one of the most intriguing prospects at the position. He can impress with his deep ball, he can run past and through defenders, and has also shown some good ball replacement despite knocks on his accuracy. His less than ideal mechanics, inconsistent play, and on-field absence in 2020, however, have him now well below the upper echelon of his peers, despite the first-round hype he had previously. Now, that's why he's here for the taking. Given Carolina's situation, Newman could be a rewarding project. They can sit behind Teddy Bridgewater for a bit and then roll out some point in 2021. This is certainly a gamble, but you have to keep trying until you find your franchise quarterback. Here's to hop, hoping this third round roll of the dice is closer to the one the Seahawks made on Russell Wilson in 2012 than to the one the Panthers made on Will Greer in 2019. All right, next pick. Round number three still, number 92 overall pick, Bravian Jordan, the tight end out of Miami, Florida. The, tra the Panthers will trade the number uh, 109th pick and the 149th pick to the Packers for the 92nd pick overall. Fitterer and the Seahawks were certainly no strangers to trading up either. Here, we'll use our fourth and fifth picks to get back into the end of the third with the that move comes from the selection of jordan a budding tight end who can do it all the six foot three 245 pounder is a legitimate receiving threat lining up and succeeding in a multitude of looks in his three years in miami jordan is perhaps most dangerous with the ball in his hands Having led all of the nation's tight ends in yards after the catch, 353 this season, Kyle Pitts, the draft's undisputed top player at the position, was the next closest to Jordan's output at a distance of 260 yards. While Jordan can improve on technique, he is an, an engaging and an effective blocker. As current starter, Ian Thomas is still looking to break out for the Panthers. Adding in an athlete of Jordan's size and caliber to the mix certainly wouldn't hurt. All right, next, we're in round number six, so we jump. The number 188th overall pick, Dante Brown, the guard out of Alabama. The left tackle position isn't the only spot on the Carolina's offensive front that can use an upgrade. Brown, who is 6'4", 340 pounds, could help fortify their weak interior right away. He is a pro-typical mauler in the run game, having regularly used his strength and stout frame to bully defenders in his four years at Alabama. Now, Brown started at left guard for the national champions in each of their 13 games next pick round number six still the number 215th overall i'm gonna try to pronounce this name right palay gatitio the fourth the linebacker out of usc he is six foot two 249 pounds is a solid athlete at linebacker standing out most when his speed with his speed and quickness came into play at the very least, the former five-star recruit is useful body that can serve on special teams from the start and perhaps develop into a player on the defense with his range and tackling ability. So guys, that is my latest mock draft for the Carolina Panthers. Fitter trades down and a couple more trades in there that I threw in. Just kind of studying what Fitter did over at Seattle and that's why I made this mock draft. So, pound that like button, pound the subscribe button, comment down below, let me know what you think. Panther Nation, Pantherologists, keep pounding.